Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, today, we have another workshop. The workshop that we're going to have is about mentor. So for that, Bio is going to join us to explain us uh, many topics about mentor. So for instance, it, we're going to cover what is mentor, how does it work, what are the mentor core components. Uh, we're going to mention a few of the core smart contract. And then, of course, we will share some potential ideas for how mental stables could be used in your project that you're doing in this hackathon. And of course, we're going to have some question and answers at the end. So I'm glad that you are here joining us today, Bayo. Um, so yeah, take it from here. Sweet. Thank you, Nesta. Um, so yeah, as Nesta said, uh, my name is Bayo. I'm going to be um, core engineers on the mental protocol building it out so um today i'm just going to talk to you about the protocol i'm not going to go into too much depth just because there are some complex stuff in there but i'm just going to give you a light overview and tell you how you can use it and how you can integrate with with it so uh yeah let's get the next slide so first of all just wanted to let you guys know that there is a um, thousand cusd bounty for projects utilizing mental stables um so check out how you can integrate the stables of your project. Sweet. So um, here's the things that I'm going to cover today. So first, I'm going to give you an overview of what Mentor is. Um, we're going to talk about the core components, the core smart contracts, how you can interact with the smart contracts. And I'll give you some ideas for how the Mentor stables could be used. And then we can um, do some questions if there are any. Great. So what is Mento? So Mento is an open source platform that allows the creation of stable value crypto assets, what we call stable coins. Um, stable coins are crypto assets that aim to track the value of an existing real world asset. Um, so for an example, one of the stable coins that we have launched on the Mento platform is CUSD, and that's designed to track the US dollar. Um, stable coins usually fall under one of the following three categories. And the first of those categories is fiat backed. So um, one of the biggest um, examples of a fiat backed stable coins is um, USDC. And so basically with each um, peg token, um, one, sorry, each peg token um, is backed one to one by real USD. So if I want to mint a USDC token, um, I'd have to exchange one US dollar for that. And in return, I'd get a USDC token. So the next type of stablecoin we have are crypto-backed stablecoins. So um, these stablecoins are backed by other crypto assets such as BTC, ETH, or any of our tokenized assets on um, the blockchain. And the last category are algorithmic stablecoins. And so these um, are stablecoins that have a mechanism to adjust the supply of the stablecoin based on the demand. Um, yeah. So mental stables can be classified as hybrid as they have characteristic of all three of these um, stablecoin types. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So um, the mental stables have the following characteristics. So first of all, they require collateral assets to be exchanged for minting. So right now you can um, create or mint a CUSD or CREAL by exchanging an equivalent amount of Celo. Um, currently, it's only Celo that can be exchanged for um, one of these stable assets, but in the future, we'll be expanding this to support other stable assets that are held by the reserve. Mental stables are also backed by a diversified portfolio of crypto assets, and this is the mental reserve, and I'll touch on that a bit later. And they also have an elastic supply, which is adjusted when a stable is minted or burned. So one important thing to note is that Whilst the um, mental stables are collateralized, they're actually over collateralized. So there's actually right now, there's two times more collateral in the um, reserve than the amount of stable coins that are issued. And um, our reserve is fully transparent and we can look at that a bit later. So currently three different stable coins that are launched and that are live on mental. And there's a CUSD, CREAL and CEURO. Uh, next slide, please. So here we have the core components that contribute to the functionality of the mental protocol. So um, we have the reserve, 
we have the core smart contracts and we have the Oracle clients. So the reserve is um, basically a smart contract that consists of cello and a diversified basket of crypto assets. It's periodically rebalanced to achieve a target allocation. And this target allocation is set by um, governance. It's fully transparent. And as I mentioned before, it's over collateralized. It actually um, supports the ability to expand and contract the supply of the stable assets. Um, and also you can view the reserve, I would have liked to have shown you, but you can actually view the reserve by just going to reserve.mentor.org and there you'll see um, the current reserve holdings, you'll see the addresses for the um, reserve addresses where the contracts, um, where the assets are being held, you'll see the total stable coins that have been issued and their um, amounts there. So you can buy lots of information on the reserve website. So next we have the Oracle clients. So the mental protocol needs to have knowledge of the market price of seller with respect to USD and any other currencies that we have issued stable assets for. So this information is collected by external Oracle clients that aggregate this data from centralized exchanges and then send reports to a smart contract on chain. So the median of the reported rates is now made available for anyone to um, consume. So the most important part of this are the smart contracts. So there are four main smart contracts that make up the mental protocol. So as I mentioned before, we have the reserve and this basically holds the collateral assets and ensures the price stability of stable assets with respect to their pegs. And then we have the sorted oracles clients and this maintains a list of Oracle exchange rates between Celo and other currencies. So this is the contract that the Oracle clients will send the reports of their rates to. Whilst anyone can read the Oracle, Oracle rates from this contract, not anyone can submit reports to the sorted Oracle's contract. Um, there's a whitelisted list of um, addresses that can actually submit reports to this contract. And then we have the stable token contract. And this is just an ERC-20 compliant token with an adjustable supply. And so for each stable asset that's issued, we deploy a new instance of this stable token contract. So currently we have three stable assets issued. Um, so we have three stable token contracts, one for the USD, one for C Brazilian Real, and one for the C Euro. And then we have the exchange contract. And this is probably the contract that's probably interacted with the most. So the exchange contract allows the exchange of seller tokens for stable tokens and vice versa using a constant product market maker model. So um, if you want to integrate with the mental protocol, it's most likely that you're going to be using these two contracts that I've highlighted in green. So you're probably going to um, be doing some kind of um, management of token allowances with the stable token contracts, or you might be minting and burning um, C stables um, in exchange for Celo using the exchange contract. So um, it's pretty straightforward to interact with the mental contracts. First of all, they're all upgradable contracts. So when you're interacting with them, you'll be interacting with the um, proxy contract. Um, and you can interact directly with the contracts from another smart contract using Solidity. And so this link here will show you the um, addresses for the deployed smart contracts. Um, and that will help with if you're using Solidity or if you're interacting from a front end um, and you don't want to write too much custom stuff, there's actually a, a library called Contract Kit, which is built by um, C Labs team, and that will help you with integrating and sending requests to the Cello um, mental smart contracts. And so there's a link to the documentation on how you can use it, but I'm just going to show you a quick, simple example of how you could buy a stable um, using Cello um, use in, in a Solidity smart contract. So as the stable tokens are ERC20 compliant, the same as Cello. Um, you can use the IERC20 interface, which is part of the Open Zeppelin um, contracts or any other um, libraries that have that, 
to send requests to the um, seller token or the any of the stables as long as you have the address so here what we're doing is we are um, creating references to the CUSD token and the um, seller token and so in order to buy a stable with Celo, first what happens is in this function here we um, transfer the seller token from the message sender to this contract um, that we've written and so obviously you need to um, increase the allowance of this contract for the message sender so you don't get a revert there so next um, the mentor exchange for cusd has a function called sell which allows you to sell um, any specified amount of token for another so in this case we're selling a given amount of cello for usd so the first parameter for the um, function is the amount to sell and then the second is the minimum of the output token that's expected but in this case i've just put zero just for um, simplicity's sake and um the last param is true or false to indicate whether or not we're um selling cello and so this function when it's called we're actually behind the scenes exchange the um cello for cusd and would return that back to this contract calling it it also return the amount of CUSD that was received for the exchange. And so what the third line does is transfers the CUSD to the message sender, and that would complete the uh, process of buying um, a stable with um, Celo. So um, here are some ideas for things you could do with mental stables and projects. So mental stables um, are pretty good because they um, they could be used as a means of exchange. So different ways you can use them. Well, one way is um, we could create a decentralized escrow application. And this would benefit from being on Celo because of the lower transaction fees. And then mental stables could be used as a means of payments for the items being exchanged. Um, another idea for something um, that could be built would be a de decentralized fundraising platform. So um, a decentralized fundraising platform would be great because um, if it's decentralized and running on the blockchain, then there's not much or the probability of someone actually, um, you know, canceling a campaign or something like that is pretty low. Um, so with something like this, it could accept donations in mental stable or um, seller. So I've pr pretty much flown through that. And so um, here are some links for finding out more information on mental, you could join the mental discord or you could um, go to the website which is mental.org and you can find any other relevant information there and so now um, any questions yeah thank you Bayo. it was awesome i think that now we are more clear about what is mental how it works and and actually some ideas on how to implement um some some cool project ideas into our projects. Um, yeah, I think we don't have currently uh, questions, but I don't know, what do you think if we um, share maybe the documentation of Mento on screen? What do you think? Yeah, sure, that would be, yeah, sure, yeah, you can navigate. Um, so if you head to um, docs.mento.org, we currently have the documentation, um, it's split right now. But we're working on consolidating it under docs.mentor.org. And so you can see here we have an intro to a more in-depth explanation of, you know, like this, the stability algorithm that works um, and some equations if you're interested in that. Um, there's a lot of information here and it's a bit, it goes in depth. So if you want to dig deep, then you can definitely look at that. Um, there is still some documentation on the mental protocol on the Celo website as yep. well. But, um, we're still working on migrating that over so it's all in one place so if you went to the docs.cello.org and if you down the side if you expand the protocol um, section and then stability and then if you yeah there's an overview there and then if you click the um, cello stability algorithm there you have more information on how the you know the protocol works yep absolutely so 
All right, so we have two places to look for more information. And right now the idea is to put more information into the docs of Mentor, correct? That's right, That's right. yeah. All right, awesome. So another thing that you mentioned was about the uh, reserve part, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the um, core, one of the building blocks of Mentor is transparency. So we try to keep everything transparent and this is how, you know, Cello operates as well. So um, here you can see the current reserve holdings, the current breakdown of the assets in the reserve. And if you scroll down a bit further, you can actually see the target. Um, okay, here you can see the outstanding supply of stables. And I'd mentioned that the reserve is over collateralized. And so you can see the reserve ratio shows how much over collateralized it is. So it's 2.23 times over. And then here we have the addresses of the different wallets that are holding the reserve assets. And awesome. if you scroll right down, you can actually see the target allocation. And so I'd mentioned that the reserve is rebalanced periodically. Well, this is what the rebalancing is heading towards this allocation here, which has been, um, you know, defined by governance. Cool. Could you, could you maybe um, explain the assets that we have under the reserve? Maybe, I don't yeah. know, maybe what's CMCO too? Yeah, so one of the things that Mentor aims to be is sustainable. And so um, with Celo's push for regenerative finance, Mentor kind of embraces that. And so um, CMO2 is actually a carbonized carbon, sorry, a tokenized carbon credit. And so um, we're supporting refi by including natural capital backed assets in the reserve. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Another thing that you would like to mention on the reserve part, or hmm, I don't know, maybe regarding to ideas of uh, folks that are, um, you know, working on a project. Yeah. Um, so regarding projects to do with the reserve, um, a lot of the functions on the actual reserve contracts are protected. But I think if um, someone wanted to do something to do with monitoring the reserve, like monitoring the levels of the, um, you know, the assets and I don't know, maybe doing some kind of alerting that might be useful. But I think from the integrating with the reserve, it might be more of a, uh, an analytical thing just because there's not much functionality that that's, that's actually available for external people with the reserve. Right. Awesome. Well, I think that today we cover what is Mento together with, with Bio, you know, the documentation, how to look it, how to analyze how it's structured in Docs Mento and also in Docs Cello. Uh, we also saw the, the, the Mento Reserve, how, how it is structured. And um, yeah, I think it's awesome. Thank you so much, Bio. And for any question, I guess that uh, people should reach Mento team, right? On the Discord, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can join the Discord by just going to chat.mentor.org and then anyone there will answer any questions. Awesome. Well, I think that today was an awesome workshop. Thank you so much again, uh, Bio, and I hope to see you next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.